Hello and welcome to another Mr. Castle Science Special. Today we're going to be looking at the eye and sight. This lesson is going to come in three parts. We're going to look firstly at the eye and the structure of the eye. And secondly, we're going to look at um, accommodation or focusing. And thirdly, we're going to look at how we can um, use glasses and lenses to correct certain problems with vision. So let's take a look at the structure of the eye. Here you can see a side on or a sectional view of the eye. And the first area to look at is the conjunctiva. This is a thin transparent piece of material that covers the outside of the eye, protecting the eye from scratches and dirt. Although it can get infected and give you conjunctivitis. The next layer is this white area just below the conjunctiva known as the cornea. This protects the surface of the eye and it also has a small role in focusing light rays. Although it can become cloudy with age, and that's a disease called cataracts, which can easily be corrected with a minor surgery. As you've seen in previous videos, we also have a layer of muscles, which regulates the amount of light entering the eye through the pupil. And these muscles have particular colours, for example, blue, and they're known as the iris. Then we have the white of the eye, which surrounds the entire eyeball, and you can see from the front view as well, called the sclera. Next is the choroid. Now the choroid, if you have ever dissected an eye, you'll see is the thin, shiny black layer. Um, it almost shivers a bit like a petrol, a um, puddle of petrol. And that job is to reflect any light that gets through the retina back onto the cells in the retina. Now, of course, you have both rod and cone cells in the retina, and they sense light and create electrical nerve impulses, which get transmitted along the optic nerve to the brain, which interprets the impulses as sight and images. Then we have the lens. Now, it's the job of the lens to change shape and focus light so that it hits at the back of the retina here. To help the lens change sight so that the light will always focus at this particular point, we also have suspensory ligaments which hold the lens in place and ciliary muscles both here and here. And it's a job of those ciliary muscles to contract and relax and help to change the shape of the lens from either thick or to thin or thin to thicker, depending on what kind of object you're. So let's take a brief look at the retina and the retina is found at the back of the eye here and it's full of those cells that are going to absorb the light energy and create electrical nerve impulses. In fact, it's got two main types of cells. They're known as rod and cones and rod and cones are both receptor cells found in the retina and both types of cells will absorb light. The rod cells work very well in low light levels. They allow us to see in black and white and to see objects in your periphery. So an object sort of just outside your vision here, you'll see that as black or a black image or a dark image of something moving. And if you look straight forward, you can't quite see what it is, but you're aware something's there. And that's a very, very useful survival tactic in terms of reflexes, because you can see something that might be ready to attack you or harm you. And you'll be able to have a reflex action and move out of the way and protect yourself from harm. But in terms of looking straight ahead, you have the cone cells, which are concentrated in the fovea, and they allow us to see in colour. You can see that's in the diagram here. And they allow us to absorb um, light energy in terms of colour and allow us to create um, a range of electrical nerve impulses, which your brain interprets as colours so that we can see in more detail when we're looking straight ahead. So now we're going to take a more detailed uh, look at focusing of the eye, or this will be known as accommodation in your exam board. And you can see from these two diagrams here that this really relies on the shape of the lens and how thick or thin that is. And that will determine how much the light is bent, or bent a lot or bent only a little. If you're looking at an object which is far away, the rays of light appear to come in parallel to each other. So those rays of light do not need to bend very much. They're bent a small amount by the cornea and again bent a small amount by the lens. And to achieve this small amount of bending or refraction, the lens itself needs to be very, very thin. So we need a thin lens. 
And this is achieved due to two structures within the eye, the suspensory ligaments and the ciliary muscles. And in this case, the suspensory ligaments need to be very, very tight so that they can then pull tightly and pull the lens up and down so it's pulled and stretched to make thin. Now, in order to have this tight suspensory ligaments, we actually need the ciliary muscles to relax. Those ciliary muscles are um, round muscles. So when they relax, they actually move out and stretch and pull the suspensory ligaments as the ciliary muscles relax. Well, the opposite is true if you look at a near object. When you're looking at a near object, the light appears to be reflecting and moving at quite far angles away from that object. So in order to bring that light back to the retina, we actually have to have quite a wide, large angles in order to reflect that, refract that light. And that's achieved by a small amount of bending at the cornea and a much larger amount of bending in the lens. So the lens must adjust and become a much larger or thicker lens in order to refract the light more so that it meets both of the light rays meet at the retina at the fovea. So and to form a clear, sharp, crisp image that's not blurry. So how do you achieve that? Well, again, it's got the same two areas, the suspensory ligaments and the ciliary muscles. In this case, so the suspensory ligaments, they don't need to pull the lens anymore. So they just relax and they loosen. And to achieve that, the ciliary muscles, those big, round, wide, circular muscles will contract, become smaller. And that will loosen the suspensory ligaments hold on the lens. So have a little think about this and then I'm going to give you a gap fill on the next slide so that you can try and apply your knowledge and think of how you can get the best sentences to use for your exam answers. So here's that gap fill. Pause the video now, write this down, have a look at the two diagrams that you got on this page. What happens when you are looking at near objects and when you're looking at distant objects? So here are the answers. When you look at a near object or a close object, the lens needs to bend and refract the light more. So the lens needs to be thicker. And to achieve that, the ciliary muscles will contract and the sensory, suspensory ligaments will loosen so the lens becomes thicker. And you can see that in the diagram here. Here the ciliary muscles have contracted and that's made that the muscles have moved in. You can see that they're quite thick on this diagram. And that's made the suspensory ligaments here sort of all a bit wavy and, and all very loose. So there's less pressure, less pull force on the lens itself here. So the lens becomes thicker. You can see that in the diagram up here as well. And that will bend and refract the light more so that the light can meet up the retina. When we're looking at distant objects, the lens needs to bend and refract the light less. It still needs to bend and refract the light just less than it does when you look at a near object. So the lens needs to be thinner. And to achieve this, the ciliary muscles will relax, the sensory lig suspensory ligaments will therefore tighten and become uh, the lens will become thinner. And you can see that here in comparison to the previous diagram, we've got the ciliary muscles are much, much shorter. They have relaxed and they've pulled and the suspensory ligaments here have become much, much tighter and they've got a big pull force on the lens. So the lens becomes Thin. So let's now take a look at some common problems with sight and how they can be corrected. First one we'll look at is being long sighted. And what does that actually mean? Well, if you're long sighted, you can see far objects, but you're going to have difficulty struggling to see near objects. In fact, when you look at a near object, the light rays 
do not focus at the retina here where they should do. In fact, they focus behind the retina um, if, you, if the light rays were extended. So you'd actually get one, two, three different rays of light all hitting the retina at three different points. So the vision will appear blurry, which is not what you want. And the reason for this is either the eyeball is not long enough or the lens isn't thick enough um, so instead we get the light focusing behind the retina and that gives you issues when you're looking at near objects so how can we correct this well in order to correct this you need to make certain that you have um, a convex lens um, a convex lens will begin to refract or bend the light just a little bit here you can see that bend there before it actually reaches the lens of your own eye so that lens can then still bend the light and because of the lens the light has been bent by the convex lens first and your own lens of the eye it will then meet quite nicely at the retina here so therefore you'll get nice crisp clear vision so i'm just going to show you now the gap fill try and pause the video at this point think about those exam answers and how you can best use keywords to answer any questions about accommodation or focusing and correcting long sight so here's the answers when you're long sighted you can see far objects but you have difficulty seeing near objects because the eyeball is too short or the lens cannot become thick enough so the light rays do not meet at the retina Instead, the light focuses behind the retina, so the image is blurry. To correct long sight, you, when you're long sighted, you must wear glasses using a convex lens, and the convex lens will refract the light more before it enters the eye. The lens of the eye will then reflect the light as normal, and the light will now be focused at the retina, as you can see in the diagrams. So what about if you're short sighted? Well, here we've got the opposite problem. When you're short sighted, you can see near objects, but you're going to have difficulty seeing far objects because either the eyeball is going to be too long or the lens is too thick, so it refracts the light too much. So the light will actually converge and focus in front of the retina. So again, you end up with three rays of light at different points on the retina. So you get a blurry image. So how can we correct this short sightedness? Well, when you're short sighted, you must wear glasses, this time with a convex lens, concave lens, sorry. And this concave lens will actually spread out the rays of light so that when they enter your eye using this thicker lens, they get bent back the correct amount to focus at the retina there. So again, here is a gap fill. You want to pause the video now, write this down, think about your exam language because in each of these paragraphs we've got three or four marks which you could easily gain by using these in your exams. And here are the answers. When you're short sighted you can see near objects but you have difficulty seeing far objects because the eyeball is too long or the lens is too thick. So the light rays do not meet at the retina. Instead, the light focuses in front of the retina, so the image is blurry. When you're short-sighted, you must wear glasses using concave lenses. Concave lenses will refract the light away from the eye, spreading the light rays before they enter the eye. The lens of the eye will then refract the light as normal, and the light will now be focused on the retina. So you'll have a crisp, clear image. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on the eye and sight. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Mr. Carter's um, Science Specials so that you will get the first notifications of when the new videos come out. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been useful for you. Thank you very much for watching.